let's meet again in the fall. The realization of a statement made in April. On September 18th, South Korean President Moon Jae-in traveled to the North Korean capital Pyongyang for a three-day summit with Chairman Kim Jong-un. The third summit between the two leaders since April, and the first time a leader from the South has visited the North in more than a decade, came amid a stalemate between Pyongyang and Washington over the progress of disarmament talks. President Moon has once again been cast in the role of mediator, with hopes pinned on him to reignite the faltering talks. So how is the summit being perceived outside Korea? And what's ahead for the peninsula? We sat down with Marcel Pesco, director of the OSCE Conflict Prevention Center, and discussed the nature of peace and security based on the experience of Europe. Uh, director Pesco, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for this kind invitation. Uh -huh. um, so the third Moon Kim Summit is taking place in Pyongyang, North Korea now. How do you feel visiting Korea during such a critical period? I'm very happy to be here because I, I, I feel a new dynamics uh, in the society. And of course, uh, these uh, high-level meetings are very important as the leaders of, of both countries are showing the leadership mm -hmm. and share understanding of the need to maintain uh, good relations, dialogue, and understanding of the issues which are on the agenda. So for me, it's very important that uh, both sides are showing commitment and readiness to continue their dialogue. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, 2018 has been a very dynamic year for the Korean Peninsula. There have been three summits and also there was the first Kim Trump summit in Singapore as well. Um, what's your view on these dynamic changes on the peninsula? Well, of course, I think the global community was uh, got by surprise, I would say, that right. uh, this happened uh -huh. not so fast, uh -huh. uh, given where we were last year and all the nuclear threats we had to face uh, last year. Uh -huh. But I think it's, uh, it's uh, good news. It's good news that uh, the global leaders are getting together and showing, uh, showing leadership. I think that the uh, global community is expecting that uh, there will be a common understanding of the issues on the, on the agenda mm -hmm. and understanding how to overcome them. And of course, for that, as I'm representing the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, and we have a history or track record of the confidence and security building measures, mm -hmm. I can point to the Helsinki summit in 1975 when the leaders of Europe uh, got together mm -hmm. um, and after the long ne negotiations they agreed on the Helsinki mm -hmm. principles. So I see some parallels here as well that uh, uh, here in the Northeast Asia, of mm -hmm. course, there is a need for the uh, all actors mm -hmm. to, 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 to meet, uh, discuss and, and design the, the further platforms for, for dialogue and negotiations. Mm -hmm. But of course, this is just the beginning. It remains to be seen how uh, these commitments, and I'm also referring to the Pan Munjan uh, declaration, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is really of historical value, mm -hmm. how this is going to be implemented. Mm -hmm. So in order to ensure further implementation, of course, the commitments by the key actors, inter-Korean dialogue mm -hmm. at the high level is very important. Mm -hmm. You just mentioned the similar experience in Europe. Um, how the Europe is um, perceiving this third Moon King Summit? Uh, I would say that uh, OSCE 
uh, has a long tradition of cooperation with the Republic of Korea. I mean, the uh, Republic of Korea is the uh, partner uh, state of the OSCE, mm -hmm. and we have been uh, engaged in dialogue and common, common cooperation in many areas, including in the area of confidence and security building measures. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, there is a clear understanding that in current global world, uh, nobody is immune for security threats. So uh, uh, whatever, whatever security developments is in the neighborhood of the OSCE, and Russian Federation is also a participating state of the OSCE, that uh, has an impact on the security in the OSCE area and the other way around. Mm -hmm. So for us, uh, uh, developments in uh, addressing the, the security issues in a positive way mm -hmm. on the Korean Peninsula has an extraordinary importance, as we, as we know, that uh, uh, the, the lack of uh, agreed uh, security arrangement here in this region and uh, long years of uh, security threats and uh, military build-ups and exercises uh, uh, created a security issue not just for the region but mm -hmm. for the whole globe. So from that perspective, I think that the OSC participating states are uh, observing these developments very posit positively and supporting that. And that's one of the reasons I'm here. I'm, I want to also send this message of support mm -hmm. to, these, to these processes. Mm -hmm. After months of tension and deadlock, now finally the talks have begun between North Korea and Washington. Um, what can we expect from this summit taking place at this time? Well, as I said, it's important that the leaders show commitment and continue to maintaining dialogue at a, at a high level. Uh, the experience of the OSC or European security shows that it, it, it's a long process. I mean, you need to develop uh, at the basic understanding of each other's position mm -hmm. and, and through dialogue, through uh, reconciliation measures, create uh, necessary level of, of uh, thrust. Mm -hmm. Well, in order to achieve change and to mm -hmm. achieve the paradigm in the in the relationship, mm -hmm. of course, there needs to be uh, understanding of each other's position mm -hmm. and and through concrete measures mm -hmm. uh, develop certain confidence and, and trust. That's very very important. Mm -hmm. And I understand this uh, Pan Munjan declaration already. Uh, came with uh, uh, measures like uh, exchange of uh, uh, military visits, mm -hmm. uh, uh, creating hotlines, mm -hmm. uh, the ambition to uh, change the uh, uh, military zone into the zone of cooperation and mm -hmm. peace, then also the mechanisms of dialogue for prevention of maritime incidents. Mm -hmm. I think those are very important measures mm -hmm. which could contribute to this trust building. So I would say this is uh, in this should be incremental process and through this trust building of course the issues like denuclearization mm -hmm. and creating a, a, a strategic balance in the region mm -hmm. could be addressed uh, as well. Those are I would say intervine processes mm -hmm. and they need uh, uh, very much support from the top and political leadership. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see. Um, then what role do you see the third Moon Kim summit can play um, regarding Kim Trump summit? I mean. well, uh, well, it's very important that uh, the, these meetings are happening uh, in a relatively short period of time mm -hmm. and this creates the understanding and the chemistry also between the, between the leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, this should first and foremost be about creating the trust on the uh, Korean Peninsula, mm -hmm. but uh, as I said, the, uh, the security doesn't know the borders. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that key actors and particularly the U.S. is involved and engaged in, in promoting this, mm -hmm. of this trust building uh, activities. Mm -hmm. And I believe that uh, uh, also looking at the European experience, uh, that this process will also lead to engagement of, of other actors uh, in, the, in the region. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's not for me to, to comment uh, about the speed of that process. Uh, uh, we know from the history that we had six-party talks in the region, but uh, 
uh, as I said, that uh, uh, security threats uh, know no borders. Uh, therefore, I think, uh, and the European experience uh, points to that, there is a need to engage a broader uh, region um, and actors into that process mm -hmm. and, and create the shared understanding mm -hmm. of the sequencing of, of these uh, uh, agreed uh, steps mm -hmm. for the near future. Mm -hmm. Then, what will be the most critical aspects of negotiation on the nuclearization process? Looking back at the, at the lessons learned from the Cold War period, uh, I would say uh, limitation of strategic weapons plays an important role in creating um, area of uh, predictability, strat uh, confidence mm -hmm. uh, through transparency. Uh, and here I would look at it as, uh, again, as a sort of uh, parallel processes where there is a need to work on these confidence building measures, uh, particularly the political military area, which provide for uh, greater uh, predictability, um, avoiding misunderstandings through uh, sharing information, uh, through addressing uh, um, political and, and military situations uh, in a, in a uh, common way, uh, through uh, sharing defense planning, for instance, uh, military visits. So I would see this as one layer of cooperation. Mm -hmm. Another one would be arms control uh, in, the, in the area of conventional armaments. Uh, again, in the, in the European context, in 1990, uh, there was this Commercial Armed Forces uh, Treaty signed, mm -hmm. which resulted in dramatic reduction of uh, conventional armaments in Europe, which also contributed to the de-escalation and, and a certain level of uh, rapprochement and, and trust uh, mm -hmm. in the region. Uh, however, I would like to also point to the SALT-1 uh, treaty, which was signed uh, in the end of 80s, and INF agreement, mm -hmm. which also created uh, uh, the predictability and, and certain balance at the, at the strategic level. Mm -hmm. So again, I, I, don't, I, would like to, I don't want to comment about uh, the denuclearization process as such, mm -hmm. and I, I see there, is the, there are still continued uh, misunderstanding when it comes to conditionality here. What I would, uh, of course, recommend is that certainly this should be part of the, of the uh, I would say, reconciliation process. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would leave it to the, to the leaders to, f to find a way about the, uh, about the sequencing of the process. Uh, however, in the European context, there were parallel processes going on, and, and through building trust, uh, we, uh, we, we achieved a certain predictability. I would like also to stress that uh, there, in the OSC context, we had, and we still have, uh, the Helsinki Decalogue, which provides for, uh, I would say, the comprehensive framework mm -hmm. for, for uh, developing these dialogue and relations. Let me just uh, remind some of those uh, uh, fundamental principles of international cooperation, mm -hmm. such as uh, uh, equal sovereignty or peaceful settlement of disputes mm -hmm. or addressing issues in a cooperative way or non-viability of uh, uh, borders, territorial integrity, but also respect for human rights, uh, fundamental freedoms. Uh, therefore, you know, I just want to indicate that uh, if there is a really real wish to overcome the divisions from, from the past, there should be a comprehensive approach and, of course, uh, uh, st uh, limitation of strategic weapons. Denuclearization is the key mm -hmm. to creating uh, a pr more predictable and safer environment. But I would like to see it as a part of more comprehensive effort, which also addressing other aspects of reconciliation, mm -hmm. which I have mentioned. Mm -hmm, I see. Um, you just mentioned the key part will be the trust building process. And what will be the most important factors regarding when we try to build trust? I would say, first, there is a need to manage expectations. Uh, our experience is that this is a long-term process. Uh, then one thing is to sign a peace treaty. Mm -hmm. 
Another one is to ensure its implementation. Mm -hmm. And of course, there are developments ongoing. There is new technology, there are new challenges, there are hybrid threats, there are you know, climate change, uh, organized crime, maritime security. So I would see uh, a need for creating a platform for constant interaction and dialogue uh, uh, in the future, whereby uh, you know, updating the agreed, agreed measures would, would be needed and, and, and addressing them on, on, a, on a permanent basis. I would uh, advise the leaders to look into the experience uh, of the, in the European context and perhaps they will find some inspiration there also for their uh, work in this area. Mm -hmm. I see. Now let's talk about the organization that okay. you work for, um, <laughs> the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, um, also known as OSCE. Mm -hmm. um, what role does this organization play in international society? You know, the world after the Second World War was uh, divided, uh, as, as we know. and. Uh, um, and in Europe, in particular in the European context, uh, people have been threatened by the risk of uh, large military escalation. Uh, uh, basically, the relations in the 60s and early 70s were based on deterrence as opposed to cooperation. Mm -hmm. uh, constant military build-up, arms race, uh, uh, strengthening of nuclear capacities, uh, could have led to eruption of, of conflict, particularly in the, in the European context. So I think this uh, prompted leaders then to engage into, into the negotiations and dialogue and look how, uh, in a non-ideological way, a platform could be created for reducing the, the, the threat of, of, of military, military action for uh, de-escalation mm -hmm. of, of mm -hmm. tension in, in that region. Uh, and this is how you know, the, the idea of creating a platform, which now is, we understand as OSCE, has been created in the, in the mid-70s, mm -hmm. known as a Helsinki process, uh, then, of course, I mentioned this Helsinki Dialogue, which created the framework for behavior in the international community. Uh, the feature, the different feature, I would, I would say, what differs OSC from other regional organizations is that it's based on comprehensive approach to security, mm -hmm. meaning that besides political military aspects of security, mm -hmm. we also integrated their economic and environmental aspects as well as human dimension aspects. So we see, uh, we understand security in a comprehensive way. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not only about the security of states, you know, and we like to talk about geopolitics, you know, and balance between the states, mm -hmm. but it's also about the security of people. Mm -hmm. It's about the level of economic uh, in engagement. It's about the level of ab ability to address the environmental challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about the, also about the level of recognition of the implementation of human rights mm -hmm. and fundamental freedoms. Mm -hmm. So this all in this OSC type of approach mm -hmm. to security mm -hmm. creates uh, uh, creates factors which contributes to prevention and that's the main, I would say, the main um, uh, thrust of the organization mm -hmm. to invest into prevention through dialogue, through respecting these the, this principles and really to be able to prevent potential escalations through uh, because of the misunderstandings and, and divisions. So that it needs to be, you know, uh, our understanding is that there needs to be comprehensive approach, and of course, individual uh, should be in the center of, of the action of the government and, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. I see. South Korea um, hosted um, Seoul Defense Dialogue from 12th to 14th in mm -hmm. this month. What issues were on the table for the meeting? Current situation on the on the peninsula in the broader regional context uh, were among the top uh, questions uh, addressed uh, uh, by um, by the participants uh, denuclearization creating strategic balance uh, looking at how to put the Panmunjom declaration into the real life uh, 
how to feed uh, in with the, with the confidence building measures into the political process. Mm -hmm. So I think it was from my perspective as a representative of one of the three international organizations who were invited, I'm very thankful for that. Um, I have seen a lot of interests, a um, uh, lot of political leadership uh, I, uh, on the side of the Korean uh, authorities, uh, uh, deputy ministers of defense, uh, national defense, uh, um, uh, provided very clear uh, messages on, into that direction. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we have been, of course, also discussing the issues of maritime security, uh, creating a space for regional cooperation in that area. And I think it's very important that's happening here, uh, where, again, Korea provides a leadership. It's very important that all stakeholders mm. are presented here. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. This inclusive approach, as I think, can work as long as everybody feels the ownership uh, for, uh, for that and the ability to interact. Mm -hmm. um, we all know that uh, in the North Asian region and the wide, wider Indo-Pacific region, mm -hmm. simply we historically uh, we don't have s similar platform or arrangement like right. in the European context, uh -huh. which would be dealing with the security issues on permanent basis. So I see uh, SDD as uh, a contribution to creating a platform for such dialogue and an understanding of, of the joint orientation mm -hmm. in addressing these challenges. Mm -hmm. So I see it's very important that uh, Korea provides leadership here. And, and there, there is, of course, a sort of uh, interaction between uh, uh, inter-Korean reconciliation process and it provides the opportunity for creating a space for dialogue right. and interaction also in the, in the uh -huh. broader region. Uh -huh. But as I said, uh, well, uh, our experience shows that we need to be patient, <laughs> that it's, it's a long, long term. Mm -hmm. We have to be smart in addressing issues where a potential for consensus uh, appears. And we really need to find a way how to make these uh, processes long term because in the end of the day, it's about the dialogue. I mean, mm -hmm. the dialogue contributes to understanding mm -hmm. and common action. Mm -hmm. But I think the topics for this uh, conference, uh, the dialogue here uh, meeting, were very uh, up to date uh, and really addressed the most pertinent issues of security in North uh, uh, East Asia region. Mm -hmm. Mm, I see. Before we wrap up our interview, would you share your word with our viewers who are longing for permanent peace on the Korean Peninsula? And also, um, is there any kind of advice for President Moon? Um, <laughs> um, well, I'm not in the position, of course, to advise to your president, mm -hmm. but I would praise him for, for his leadership, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, for his commitments and for the vision. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that the president and the government of Korea is uh, very much committed to create peace and security on the, on the, on the peninsula and in the wider, uh, wider region. And I am very much thankful for this level of commitment. Also, this uh, Seoul uh, defense dialogue uh, is, uh, is a, uh, shows uh, this, uh, this commitment. Uh, we have heard from Korean representatives very clear messages towards uh, the, the need to establish the lines for cooperation, for lines for dialogue, lines for confidence building. Uh, we have seen the interest to change the demilitarization zone into the zone of peace and cooperation. And, and I think that uh, the, the leaders should be praised for that, but at the same time, they should be supported you know, and, uh, by the international community. Mm -hmm. Um, and here, uh, as a representative of the OSCE, I can reassure you that there is a great support for, for these activities. And we should not forget that this is not only about the states, and first and foremost, this is about people. So it's really about creating a sense of safety and security for the people. And I'm sure that, uh, that if these activities continue, uh, then there will be greater support also among the people on both sides of the Korean, Korean Peninsula uh, and for the prosperity and, and future of all of us. 
So let's hope that uh, this time after so many years of failures and, and many years of security threats and, and military attacks, we finally could see a progress in, in this area. Uh, as I said, there is a need to manage expectations, there is, a, there is a need to have a support from the top, but also to create uh, trust at the, at the working level and, and really to, to support the gradual, gradual process. Uh, uh, and on that, uh, I think uh, the, the uh, commitments or the activities of the Korean leaders find full support of the OSCE. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for sharing your insights with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you.